Love, American Style was a popular TV show from the late 60s known for its unique stories about love and relationships. Each episode had different short stories, making it fun and surprising to watch. The show was one of the first of its kind with its format of showing many stories in one episode. There are lots of interesting facts and stories about how this show was made. As you watch each episode, you'll find out cool and unexpected things about how the show was created. Now, I'd love to hear if you have any special memories related to this show. Maybe there's an episode you really remember or a time you enjoyed watching it with someone. Feel free to share your stories or memories about this TV series. Let's talk about how this show was a memorable part of TV history. Each episode is like a new journey, full of love, fun, and surprises. Keep an eye out for those special moments that made this show a well-loved part of TV history. Love, American Style, a TV show from the late 1960s, really stood out as a fun and memorable program that really showed what life was like back then. It was known for being funny and easygoing, especially when it came to stories about love. Many families enjoyed watching it together. The show started with a memorable intro that had still photos and a catchy song, which immediately made it feel fun and humorous. The show was made up of different short stories, usually two or three in each hour-long episode. These stories, lasting about 20 to 30 minutes, were all about the funny sides of love and relationships. Sometimes, if an episode was too short, they'd add in quick, funny bits to make up the time. Some parts of the show were funnier than others. What was really interesting about this series was how it helped start other TV shows. For example, the first episode of Happy Days was shown on this show, introducing characters like Richie, Howard, and Marion. There was also an animated series called Wait Until Your Father Gets Home that first appeared on it. This way of introducing new shows was not only entertaining, but also helped kickstart other popular series. The show often had famous actors and actresses, which added surprise and variety to each episode. In this way, it was a bit like an earlier version of The Love Boat, which also told different stories each episode and had a regular crew with famous guests. This change in style showed how flexible and creative TV shows were at that time. In conclusion, Love, American Style was a show that really represented its era with a light-hearted and funny approach to love. It went beyond just its own episodes and had a lasting impact on TV shows from the late 1960s and early 1970s. Even though the humor and style were very much of its time, it left a strong impression on viewers and the TV world. In the show, a consistent visual element was the presence of a large brass bed in every story and many of the short comedic segments known as blackouts. This choice likely paid tribute to The Bed by James Broughton, a notable short film from the late 1960s. Broughton, an experimental poet and filmmaker, greatly influenced the beat poets his film, celebrated for its creative expression, showcased men and women in a garden playfully interacting on a similar brass bed. This imagery in the show subtly nodded to the cultural shifts and artistic expressions of that era. The program's financial support came primarily from Oscar Mayer, a well-known brand. This sponsorship was crucial for the show's production and outreach, helping it reach a wide audience. Musically, the series had notable contributions. In its first season, the theme song was performed by the Cousels, a family music group popular at the time. Their rendition added a familiar and engaging touch to the show's introduction. Following the first season, the Charles Fox Singers, a group of studio musicians from Los Angeles known for their work in commercials, took over the theme song. Their involvement brought a different musical flavor to the show, maintaining its appeal and freshness throughout its run. The show's format, sponsorship, and musical elements played significant roles in its production and reception. Its innovative approach to storytelling, coupled with cultural references and musical variety, made it a notable series of its time. This TV show was not just popular on its own, but also helped create many other TV shows. It's known for having the most spin-offs, both directly related and indirectly influenced. This shows how much it shaped American TV. For example, Barefoot in the Park and Wait Till Your Father Gets Home were directly inspired by it, showing how it could lead to different kinds of shows. A really important show that came indirectly from it is Happy Days. Gary Marshall first suggested New Family in Town to a network, but they didn't want it. Then, after using some of his ideas in a small part of the show, the network changed their mind. 
The movie American Graffiti also made them more interested, and that's how Happy Days started. Happy Days then led to other shows like Laverne and Shirley and Joni Loves cha, -Cha. The show also led to Mork and Mindy, which was where many people first saw the amazing Robin Williams. There were other spin-offs too, like Blansky's Beauties and Out of the Blue, showing how the original show could inspire different kinds of TV stories. Even the theme song of the show is connected to another popular show, That Girl. The same singers who sang the theme for this show also sang for That Girl. This shows how the people making TV shows at the time worked on different projects. So, this show is important not just for its own success, but also for how it helped start many other TV series. Its influence is clear in many popular shows that came after it. Phyllis Davis' career really changed because of her role in the show. She was feeling down after her work in the movie Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, where she thought she didn't do well. But the people making the series convinced her that the not-so-great acting wasn't just her fault. This support was a big moment for her, and she kept acting because of it. The show also played a big part in creating the famous TV series Happy Days. There was one episode called Love and the Happy Days Love and the newscasters that inspired Happy Days. This episode had Ron Howard, Anson Williams, and Marion Ross, who all became important characters in Happy Days. This shows how the show helped start other successful TV series, making it an important part of TV history. There's also a cool story about how Phyllis Davis got her role. She was just having lunch at Paramount and ended up auditioning by chance. Even though they had already looked at over 200 people, they offered her the role right away. This lucky break shows how unexpected the acting world can be, and it started a big part of Davis's career in the show. These stories give us a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world of TV, showing how chance and connections between different shows and movies can shape careers and change the TV landscape. This television series stands out as one of only a handful of hour-long shows using a laugh track. This feature was uncommon for shows of its duration, indicating a blend of traditional sitcom elements with the more expansive format. The presence of a laugh track in such a long format show is a noteworthy aspect of its production, reflecting a unique approach to televised storytelling during that era. The Blackouts, a series of short, comedic segments, were a significant part of the show's charm. Interestingly, many of these segments were attributed to Samuro Mitsubai and Tawasaki Kwai. These names, however, were pseudonyms for Gary Marshall and Jerry Belson, as revealed in Marshall's book, My Happy Days in Hollywood. Marshall, known for his contributions to television, used these names while collaborating with Belson. This practice of using pseudonyms was not uncommon in the entertainment industry and allowed writers and creators to explore different styles or ideas without being confined to their established reputations. The use of pseudonyms by Marshall and Belson for their contributions to the show's blackouts underscores the creative freedom and playful experimentation that characterized television production at the time. It also highlights the collaborative nature of television writing, where individuals often work together under various guises to produce content that was both entertaining and innovative. The series, therefore, not only entertained audiences with its stories about love and relationships, but also served as a canvas for creative expression behind the scenes. The involvement of well-known figures like Marshall and Belson, albeit under pseudonyms, added a layer of depth to the show's production narrative, making it a fascinating study in television history. In summary, this TV show was notable for its unique use of a laugh track in an hour-long format and the creative contributions of its writers, who often worked under pseudonyms. These elements contributed to the show's distinct place in television history, marking it as a creative venture that was both entertaining and innovative.